there, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and our story today comes from the country of England, and it is called A Little Tiny Thing. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's get started. Out in the garden, Mary sat, hemming a pocket handkerchief. When there came a little insect running, oh, in such a hurry, across the small stone table by her side. The sewing was not done, for <laughs> Mary liked doing nothing best, and she thought it would be fun to drop her little thimble over the little ant. <laughs> now he's in the dark, she said. Can he mind? He's only such a little thing. Then Mary ran away, for her mother called her, and she forgot all about the little ant under the thimble. There he was, running round and round and round his dark little prison, with his little horns on his head quivering, his little perfect legs bending as beautifully as those of a racehorse. And he was in quite as big of a fright as if he were a tall elephant. Oh, you would have heard him say if you'd been clever enough, I can't get out, I can't get out. I shall just lay down and die. Mary went to bed and in the night, the rain poured down. The handkerchief was soaked as if somebody had been crying very much when she went out to fetch it the next day as soon as the sun shone. I wonder what he's doing, said Mary. But when she lifted up the thimble, the little tiny thing lay stiff and still. Oh, did he die of being under the thimble? She said aloud. I'm afraid he did mind. Why did you do that, Mary? said her father, who was close by and who had guessed the truth. Wait, see? He moves. One of his legs. Run to the house and fetch a wee taste of honey from the breakfast table for the little thing that you starved. I didn't mean to, said Mary. She touched the honey in the spoon with a little blade of grass and tenderly put a drop of it before the little ant. He put out a little fairy tongue to lick up the sweet stuff. Mm. And then he grew well and stood upon his pretty little jointed feet. He tried to run. Where is he in such a hurry to go, do you think? asked her father. I don't know, said Mary softly, for she felt ashamed. He wants to run home, said father. I know where he lives, in a little round world of ants under that apple tree. Oh, has such a little tiny thing a real home of his own? I should have thought he just lived about anywhere. <laughs> Why, he would not like that at all. At home he has a fine palace with passages and rooms, more than you could count. And he and the others dug them out, that they might all live together like little people in a little town. And has he got a wife and children? A lot of little baby ants at home? The baby ants are born as eggs, said the father. They are little helpless things and must be carried about by their big relations. They are father ants and mother ants and lots of other ants who are nurses to the little ones. Nobody knows his own children, but all the grown-ups take care of all the babies. This is a little nurse ant. See how she hurries off? Her babies at home must have their faces washed. Oh, Father, cried Mary. Now that's a fairy story. Not a bit of it, said Father. Ants really do clean their young ones by licking them. On sunny days, they carry their babies out and let them lie in the sun. On cold days, they take them downstairs, away from the cold and the wind. The worker ants are the nurses, 
Though the little ones are not theirs, they love them and care for them as dearly as if they were. Uh -huh. Why, that's just like Aunt Jenny who lives with us, Mary said. She mends our things and puts baby to bed and goes out for walks with us. <laughs> just the same, Father said, laughing. Is that the reason we say Aunt Jenny? You little dunce, <laughs> who taught you to spell? It's not a bad idea, all the same. It would be a good thing if there were as many Aunt Jennies in this big round world of ours as there are in the world of the little ants. Folk who care for all, no matter whose children they are. While they were talking, the little ant crept to the edge of the table and down the side and was soon lost among the blades of grass. He'll never find his way home, said Mary. <laughs> Let him alone for that, said Father. The ants have paths leading from their hill. They never lose their way. But they meet with sad accidents sometimes. What do you think I saw the other day? One of these little small chaps, an ant. It may have been this very one, was carrying home a scrap of something in his jaws for the youngsters at home. As he ran along, a bird dropped an ivy berry on him. This was worse than if a cannonball were to fall from the sky on one of us. And there he lay under it, not able to move. By and by, one of his brother ants, who was taking a stroll, caught sight of him under the berry. What did he do? asked Mary. First, he tried to push the berry off of his friend, but it was too heavy. Next, he caught hold of one of his friend's legs with his jaws and tugged and tugged till I thought his leg was going to come off. Then he just rushed about in a frantic state as if he was saying to himself, what shall I do? What shall I do? And then he ran up off the path, but in another minute came hurrying back with three other ants. Is it quite true, Father? Mary asked. Quite. The four ants talked together, gently touching their horns to each other. They looked as if they were telling one another what a dreadful accident it was, and how nobody knew whose turn would come next. After this, they set to work with a will. Two of them pushed the berry as hard as they could, while the other two pulled their friends out by his hind legs. When at last he was free, they crowded round as if petting and kissing him. These little ant folk have found out tis love, love, love that makes the world go round. I shouldn't wonder if that ant you tease so thoughtlessly is gone off to tell the news at home that there is a drop of honey to be had here. Oh, he couldn't, Father. Wait and see. In a little while, back came the ant with a troop of friends. <laughs> He's been home and told them the good news about the honey, said Father. Do you think that all children are as kind as that? Mary said, no, they're not. I don't want to call all my friends when I find a good place for blackberries. <laughs> then, said Father, don't be unkind to the ant who is kinder than you, though he's only a little tiny thing. <laughs> and that is the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy story time. Bye.